Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video is brought to you by me and Aries. This is my dog, Aries. She really wanted to be included in today's video. She's just hanging out on my lap, so we'll see how long she's gonna hang out with us today. I know. We're in a different spot. I'm back on the couch again uh, in my basement because today's video is going to be the third episode in my <laughs> mindset and makeup series. I feel like I'm really far away, but I can't lean forward because I have a dog on my lap. I know, you're a 50 pound lap dog, right. Yes, okay. So today's video is gonna be a new one in my mindset and makeup series. I filmed the second episode down here and a lot of you said that I liked it, so I thought I'd go ahead and do it again. I am really excited for today's episode because it's going to be all about budgeting and I'm just excited because I feel like I just kind of have a lot to say on this topic. I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can and as easily as I can. I know sometimes when people hear the word budgeting, like when I hear the word budgeting, I think like, oh no, and this isn't fun and all of that. But I think that budgeting is still really important. And once I started doing it and really uh, holding myself accountable to the budget that I've made, I definitely saw a really big change. So I will have both of my uh, episodes in the Mindset and Makeup series linked down below. The first one just kind of talking over why I wanted to touch on this subject uh, in the first place, how I found myself getting into a lot of debt because of makeup, and then the second episode I talk about impulse buying. Now, something that I said in the impulse buying series is that uh, I can sit here and give you my tips and tricks on budgeting and how I did it and why I found that it worked for me, uh, but the only person that can actually do it and make the change is yourself. So I don't feel like I have anything really groundbreaking to share in today's video. There are a lot of tips and, and tricks that I have heard throughout many years, but until I took responsibility for it and until I started to make a change, it didn't matter how many people were telling me the same pieces of advice over and over. It didn't matter how many books I read and how many videos I watched on the subject. I had to be the one to make the change. So I just wanted to say that same as I did with the Impulse series. Uh, I did film this makeup look. I know I'm not like super close to the camera like normal, but I have the ColourPop Frozen collection on from the Elsa set. So I feel like the blue lip, the blue eyes with the pink lip is kind of like, whoa, but... Uh, I'll, I'll link my Instagram tutorial down below if you'd be interested in seeing it. So I have my notes next to me so I can go through everything. Um, Aries is looking at my notes here as well. This is a very professional video, which I'm very proud of. But the first thing when it comes to budgeting is that you do actually have to create a budget. But one thing that you have to do before you can create your budget is you have to learn where is your money going. So before you even start budgeting, you have to really uh, make a list of all of your different expenses and where is your money going. Um, you know, how much do you pay a month a month for your usual bills, the mortgage or the rent payment, your cell phone, utility bills, water bills. Uh, I mean, if you own a home, like property taxes, I mean, you know, all of those different things. And then also you really have to track how much do you spend on average on groceries a month? Um, do you get like a haircut every month? I know when Mitch and I were very first ever working on a budget together, he gets a haircut every single month. So we were including that in the budget. How much do you spend on gas in a month? I mean, there's all these little details. So as you decide that you wanna make a budget and you're gonna get serious about it, then you have to really take the time and take the effort. It's not the most fun thing ever, but you really want to track where all of your money is going because that's going to be an easier way for you to build a budget. Because once you know how much money you are spending in a month on your bills and things that absolutely have to get paid and then other items that you still need, your groceries, your gas, and that sort of thing, you'll know how much money you have left over and how you can allocate that money. So of course, when you're going through and you're looking at everything that you spend your money on, you definitely also want to put in uh, how much money you are earning. What is your income that you're earning in a month? And then you can take that number, minus it, all of your expenses, and you can see what you have left over. I think doing this is also really important because when you get into the habit of recording where your money is going and you can really see that whether you're writing it down whether you have it in a spreadsheet whether you have an app for it once you see where your money is going 
it can kind of be a little bit jarring if you do maybe have a spending problem in certain areas you know i'm a beauty channel i've talked about how much money i've spent on makeup once you really track all your purchases that can almost be something that helps you not spend as much money because it's like oh i know that i'm gonna have to write down that i spent another 100 dollars at sephora and i don't want to do that to myself like it it really almost can kind of help in those situations so you definitely want to track uh, all of the money that you're spending and then you add in your income subtract all of your uh, expenses and so on so that's something really important that you do before you can actually create the budget see how much of your just um, see how much disposable income that you have and that i think is really important that i wanted to mention in the beginning of the video is paying yourself first now i recently read the book called smart women finish rich by david bach i highly recommend this book i will link it in my description box uh, i paid for the book myself i am a book blogger i get a lot of books sent to me in pr just like i do with makeup but this is a book that I purchased myself from Amazon and I'm so happy that I did. There are so many good, um, just money tips in general, budgeting tips. I mean, there's so much that I learned from this book. I actually talked about it in my video on five life-changing books. I recently mentioned it in my makeup monthly because I gave it a five-star review on my book blog. If you are someone who wants to learn more about money or maybe you need help in that area, I really recommend it because there's so much knowledge in here. There's so much information, but there is so many tangible uh, items that you can really work on. I read the book on my Kindle with a notebook next to me the entire time because I took so many notes. Uh, it really kind of breaks it down for you in an easy language. Sometimes when it comes to money and information that you can find, the terms are items that I don't understand. There, It's a language that I don't understand, but this book really broke it down for you in a very easy manner that it wasn't too overwhelming for me to read it. And yes, I took a lot of notes and there's a lot of things that I want to do, but it was easy to see like, okay, David Box says like, this is most important right now. If you're not doing this, you need to do it. I was like, that's my number one thing that I have to do. And then here's my other list and I can take it step by step and slowly make these changes to have my money start working for me. I work really hard. I've been working since I was 14 years old. And sometimes when I look back and especially after reading Smart Women Finish Rich, I think to myself how different possibly my life could be right now if I had read that book when I was younger. So no matter how old you are when you are watching this video, I highly, highly recommend reading this book um, because, I mean, obviously the earlier you can start saving and having your money work for you, the better, but also it's never too late. And he addresses that in the book too, that it's not too late. But one of the most important things that I took away from that book is to pay yourself first. So when I am talking about making the budget, putting in all of your expenses, putting in your income, one thing that I think is really important to put in your budget is to pay yourself first. Now, if you work at a, a more traditional job where your paycheck is coming from a company and maybe you have you know direct deposit and all that kind of stuff, um, and you have a job that offers, um, you know, a 401k and all of that, that's great. If you like definitely take advantage of that and I'll come to, back to that in a little bit, but you definitely want to take advantage of that. If you are someone like me who is self-employed, it's a little bit trickier for us, but again, Smart Woman Finish Rich has a lot of resources, a lot of websites where you can find uh, how to have retirement accounts when you're self-employed and you don't have an employer who has set something up for you, or even if you work a traditional job and maybe you don't have those benefits, there's a lot of really handy resources in this book. Again, I, I very highly recommend it, but paying yourself first, putting money into a savings account, putting money into a retirement account, I think that is so important. So even when you add in all of your expenses, take a little bit and allocate that to paying yourself first. This was one thing that I was not doing. And this was one thing when reading the book, I was like, wow, 
I should have been doing this and I should have been doing this years ago. So flashing back to saying if you have an employer that has like the 401k or things like that and to take advantage of it, this is a, a personal story that I'll share with myself and Mitch, my husband. I started working at a hospital full time when I uh, was younger than Mitch. Um, he started working his full time job when he was older than me, but we worked at our full time jobs for the same length of time. I just was younger and I quit earlier to go self employed. He started a little bit later than me um, and he eventually lost that job, but we worked the same amount of years at our positions and both of them offered matching 401ks. Now, I didn't really understand what that meant when I started the job. Uh, I I've never had someone in my life who's very financially savvy who could help me out. If you do have that, if you have parents who are really knowledgeable, siblings, spouses, their family, whatever it may be, take advantage of that. Ask questions, try to learn, try to educate yourself. Ask questions to your employer if you can. I mean, I, I just didn't really understand it. So for the first several years that I was working at that job and having a matching 401k, I did the very basic amount that you could do. Because I think, I, I can't remember the exact numbers, but to make this up for video's sake, they would do like 10% matching. But when I started, I only did 1%. And then after a while, I did 2%. And then after a few years, it wasn't until almost to the point where I was getting ready to leave that job to go full-time publishing books that I it started clicking in my head like that was a lot of money I could have gotten from my employer if I would have been contributing more but what was hard for me is when you contribute to your 401k that's money that's coming out of your paycheck so your paycheck isn't as high but what you're doing is you are protecting your future you are earning that future for yourself but as a young girl who doesn't understand that and who thinks it's more valuable for me to take home this money right now like who cares about the future i'm not thinking about the future i wish i could go back in time and change that because that is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that i missed out on because i wanted that money right now and I wasn't thinking about my future. I wasn't thinking about my financial future. And again, like I said, so Mitch was a little bit older when he started his job. He was a little bit more knowledgeable when he left his job. He was at the full capacity of what his employer matched. And the difference between our two retirement accounts as someone who, again, we worked the same amount of years, I did the very low, I never even worked my way all the way up to what they matched. And he, he grew at a very steady pace. Every year he would either up it, if he got a raise, he would up it until he was at the full potential that they could max. And we are thousands of dollars apart. My retirement account is basically diddly squat. I mean, really it's not much. Mitch's retirement account is fantastic. So I just think that is so important and I wish I could go back and do that over because I can see the numbers, I can see the difference that that made. We worked the same amount of years, we had the same benefits, Mitch took advantage of it, I did not and I really wish I would have. So that's one thing that I definitely wanted to say there but also paying yourself first, have a savings account. For, for a long time, I didn't even have a savings account. I didn't really understand what it was for. And then when I got a savings account, I again, I didn't really do my research. I didn't really understand. I didn't know there was differences with savings accounts. So I had money that I would put away into savings and it was earning such little interest. I truly, every month when you earn interest on your savings account, I was getting pennies. That's what I was earning and sometimes not even a full penny. Sometimes it was like 0 0.063 is what I earned. Like it was so, so tiny. 
And one thing that Smart Women Finish Rich taught me was to research high interest savings accounts. And David Bach lists some different resources in there of where you can look to see who has the like most competitive interest rates right now, pros and cons of different banks. I mean, you definitely wanna do your research. You want to, like I read a lot of reviews and I was even reading reviews on the bank. Do they have fees? Do they have a monthly fee? Do they have fees to transfer money in from an external bank account? You wanna be really, you want to do your research you want to know where you're putting your money but I switched over to a high interest savings account and am now making actual dollars in interest every month not pennies and not less than pennies immediately because I switched to a high interest savings account and that's a big way that you can make your money work for you. Look up compound interest. It really, it, I mean, it's just like an incredible thing. And, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I'm 32 years old and I was really just learning all of this stuff within the past few years and really even in the past few months. I know that it's hard. I know that it's, it can be confusing. It can be a lot of work to research and try to educate yourself, but it is worth it. Because not only am I making sure that my future is going to be financially stable, I do hope to have children one day, and I want them to have a financially stable future too. So that's who I'm thinking about, and that's what's really important to me. But again, going back to paying yourself first, this is really important. Have that savings account, um, have, have a separate account that is, you know, for your emergency fund or anything like that. And before, and, and put that into your budget before you see your number and you think this is what I have left over. This is what I can use for going out for dinner, drinks with friends, going to the movies, buying new clothes, buying new makeup, whatever it may be, have a, a percentage of that, that you put into your savings account and then don't touch it let that interest earn, let that compound interest do its thing and watch your money grow, watch your money work for you. I think that this is really important, I really do. And I have noticed a huge change already since I made this this change for myself. It's really nice to do automatic transfers. Again, if you work at a job that has a direct deposit or lets you um, take a percentage and move them to different accounts, I, I would highly recommend doing the automatic transfers if you have a bank that allows you to every single month on the 1st or the 15th, you transfer a, um, a certain amount or a certain percentage into your savings account. I think that's great um, because sometimes it's hard when you are doing it yourself and you're like, I know that I should really transfer some money into my savings account, but I kind of want this. I kind of want that. I kind of like having more money in my checking account. But you ha again, it comes down to you and you have to be strong. So if you're not gonna do those automatic transfers, you have to know that you are going to be able to do that to put that money in your account. Another thing too with having a savings account is that can be your backup fund. In my first makeup uh, mindset and makeup video, I talked about how I blew through my savings account. Before I left my full-time job, I made sure that I had a really good savings account just in case anything would happen. A year after I left my job, I started my YouTube channel and blew through that savings account. So the next, for two years later or whatever it was, when my husband lost his job, we had nothing to protect ourselves. We had no savings account because I had gone through it all, trying to buy makeup, trying to buy equipment, trying to buy cameras, not working as much on other items that were actually paying me, like my freelance jobs, not taking as many of them because I was trying to make as many YouTube videos as I could and I did YouTube for two years without getting paid. We didn't have a backup plan. We didn't have an emergency fund. So that is so, so important. So going back to creating your budget, you've gone through, you've tracked all your expenses, you know where your money's going, you know how much money you're bringing in, uh, you're going to pay yourself first, you um, are, are looking at your retirement accounts and, and seeing what you have going on there. I think all of that is really important. And then now it's time to actually make the spreadsheet, um, make, your, make your budget, whether that be in a spreadsheet. There's a lot of different like apps and websites and tools these days that can help you do that. Um, there's a lot, I, I mean, if you just Google around, it's gonna depend on you and what works best for you. Is it easier for you to write something down? Is it easier for you to have something in an app? Do you like spreadsheets? It's just gonna depend. So again, that's something that you need to do for yourself, but actually creating the budget and seeing where things are going and then tracking it. 
tracking those expenses, tracking when you pay your bills, and making sure that you're really following your budget. Again, it, it can be time consuming, and especially in the beginning, it can be so hard to start something, but once it becomes just a part of your daily habit, it becomes a part of your weekly habit, it just kind of turns into that thing that you do, that you do allocate the time to do that. And again, it's you're doing it to better yourself and you're doing it to probably better your family. And again, if you have children or you're about to have future children, this is the reason why you're doing it. And it's also a really good learning tool. So hopefully you can pass it on to others, whether you have friends or family members or children that will one day, you know, seek out financial advice, you you know hopefully you've taught yourself and you've educated yourself and you've learned and you've seen how you do it and you can best give your tips and tricks or you can make a youtube video trying to help other people i think that's really important one thing that i think is important too is if you do have a partner or a spouse and you guys have a financial life together so you know you probably wouldn't have to do this with your boyfriend of girlfriend of a few months and whatnot but uh, if you guys have a financial life together you own a home together you have children together whatever it may be it can really help to do this together for a long time i was the only one doing all of our financials and it was because i felt like it was a task that i could take on you know i'd been doing my own financials since i was young i mean that's just that's just how it had to be and so i felt confident taking it on and i realized there was times where i felt like i needed help or i felt like mitch wasn't understanding when i was like no i like it i don't think that we can budget for that and you know there would be frustration it really helps when both of you or all of if you have you know maybe older teenagers or whatever it may be to have you all be on the same page and understand where your money is going and how much money are you taking in and what are you taking out and i just think that's really important so once mitch and i finally started doing it together and looking at everything together it just really helps with communication money can be a really hard thing to talk about and when you get in money trouble it can be really really challenging to talk about I know my marriage truly went through a very hard period when we were having such a hard time with money, when I was spending so much money on makeup, when Mitch lost his job. It was a very challenging time because it can be hard to communicate about this. So if you can keep those lines of communication open, if you can all be on the same page, I do think that it's really important. When you look at your budget and you see how much money you have left over for the fun stuff, for the entertainment, for your hobbies, whatever it may be, if you feel like that number is pretty decent, and if you have debt, especially a lot of debt, I think that it can be important to take that piece of pie, take those dollars that you have extra for the fun stuff and put it towards an extra credit card payment, an extra student loan payment, um, just to be able to try to get a handle on debt. I know I was in a lot of debt for a very long time. I'm still in debt. I still have student loan debt. I still have credit card debt from, you know, this whole YouTube craziness that I let myself get into. So every month I pick something that I want to work on. So the past few months was one of my student loans. I have two different student loans. I picked one student loan and I worked and like I would look at my budget and when I knew that I'd have a month where I would have more than usual left over, I would make an extra student loan payment. And sometimes it was double the, the student loan payment that I would make an extra one, but I was able to pay off one of my loans. I still have another one to go, um, but I decided what I'm working on now is one of my credit cards. I wanna pay that off. It has a high interest rate. I wanna pay it off and cut it up and close it and be done with it. So if you do have extra money left over, really look at it and think what would be the most beneficial way for me to use this extra money and you know maybe it doesn't have to be every single month you're making extra payments maybe it's every other month or, or something like that but especially if you do have a lot of debt i think that it can be a really amazing thing to pay it down with that extra money versus having an extra dinner night out or going to a movie or something like that and i think is really important and even before you make a budget or once you make a budget and you're tracking your expenses i think it's really important to write down your goals 
What are your financial goals? This was one thing that we did kind of towards the beginning of Smart Women Finish Rich and I was there and I was writing down my goals. I was writing down, David Bach had you also write down the obstacles that could come in your way to reaching your goals and how could you overcome those obstacles? Because what he was saying is there's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be something that comes up. So what is the best way, like already have a plan for the best way that you can attack that and move on from it and continue to reach for your goals so that way when the inevitable happens and you do run into a roadblock and you do run into an obstacle you already know you already have a plan you already know how you're going to go through that and then continue on to reaching your goals so i mean if you want to take it a step further write down your goals write down what you think could be an obstacle and write down those resolutions to those obstacles but I think definitely goal planning is so important. You guys might know I love I love goals. I love my lists. I have a planner that I've talked about in a few of my YouTube videos from Plum Paper. I live and breathe by my planner. I think that it's so helpful to me. Um, I enjoy mine so much. But I also write down goals. I have monthly goals for myself. I have really larger goals for myself. And... Uh, um, I, I just think it's important. So I think you do need financial goals also. Are you trying to save money for a down payment for a house? Are you trying to save money for a vacation? Do you want to pay off your debt? Do you just want to build your savings account? What is it, what is it that you want for your financial goals? Write them down and I, I think that is I think that's so huge and I love writing things down again That's why I go back to my planner. I think it's really important. You can see them, but you can work towards them goals so important one thing that i try to say a lot too is that we should never judge how people choose to spend their own money uh, because everyone's plans everyone's goals everyone's wants in life is so different some people might want to spend money on shoes some people might want to spend money on travel some people might want to spend like we just have different things that we want to spend our money on so i think it's very odd when people get so judgmental of others and what they're choosing to spend money on because we're all different and we can't tell anybody that they're doing it wrong if they're doing what they think is best for them i don't i don't know if that makes any sense but i just it's just one thing that i want to say because everyone is so different the thing that i think is really important that i've touched on throughout this video but is to educate yourself do your research educate yourself ask questions read books watch videos do whatever it is that you have to do if it's something that doesn't come naturally to you managing money doesn't come naturally to me i don't understand math i don't understand numbers i hated taking accounting in college especially these days there's so many resources out there for us there's so many ways that we can take our time and read a book and watch a video and google around and just ask questions and try to be as informed as we can try to be as educated as we can and Again, just like I've been saying this whole time, it starts with you. No one else is going to be able to, like you have to motivate yourself. I wanna say no one else is gonna be able to motivate you, but hopefully those around you can motivate you or inspire you, but we can't do it for you. I can't open the book for you. I can't click the video on for you. I can't ask the questions that are in your mind because I don't know what questions you have and they're probably different from the questions I have, but hopefully I can motivate you to get started on that path because again i think it's so important not only for your financial future but for those in your family uh, children all of that i think that it's so important so educating yourself and putting the time and the work in i think is just so very important and then the last thing that i wanted to wrap this video up with is to be kind to yourself it's not easy especially when you first start out and you're tracking all of because i've done this when you're tracking all of your expenses and you're crunching the numbers and especially for me it was really hard because my income is different every single month it was so hard for me to work out like what's my average monthly income because it can vary so much so it's hard it's hard in the beginning sometimes it's hard to stay on track sometimes i get off track but i think that it's important to be kind to yourself and to understand that not every month is going to be stellar some months you you might make a mistake some months you might um add wrong and, and all of that so you have to be kind to yourself you have to be able to give yourself grace for when you don't have the best months and you know it's also important too that 
you never know when something could come up. I mean, I went down with the flu a couple weeks ago. I didn't see that coming. I got so far behind on my work, but I knew that even though it was unexpected, I couldn't be too hard on myself. You know, I missed some work. I missed a couple things and that had me super bummed out, but um, there's always gonna be things in life that we don't plan for that do come up and we just have to give ourselves grace in that situation and we have to be kind to ourselves and, but also tell ourselves that, We'll work harder the next month. We'll do better the next month um, and and learn from it and, and hopefully grow from it. So that's definitely one thing that I wanted to end with. And I, I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I was really excited to talk about this, even though budgeting can be kind of one of those like uh, topics and, and all of that. But I think that it's really important. I see what a big difference it has made for me. And I, I just wanted to be able to relay that message to you and hopefully help you in some way because with the Mindset and Makeup series, I've seen what some of you say and I've seen that some of you have really struggled in, in certain areas and, you know, I, again, I, I can't do it for you. You do have to take the, responsi the responsibility for it, but hopefully I was able to inspire you or motivate you in some way with some of the stories that I shared with you today and I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, it also was really nice having having a pup on my lap the whole time because she made it easier to talk about this So again, sorry if I'm really far away from the camera. I was planning to sit up a little closer on the couch, but you know, I have this sweet baby girl on my lap and uh, I, I'm, I'm excited that she wanted to film with me today. So do you want to say bye to everybody Aries? You want to say bye? You say bye to everyone? Oh Okay, that is where we are going to end today's video. I would love to get your 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 thoughts in the comments, of course. What are some of your best tips and tricks for budgeting? What tools do you use? What websites do you use to look at? Do you have a good book that you've read that you would recommend? I would love it if you left it in the comments because, um, you know, I'm sure someone's gonna leave something that I haven't thought of or a book that I haven't read that I can check out a podcast that I could listen to. Um, I, I mean, anything that you want to leave in the comments, I think would be so helpful, not only for others reading the comments, but for myself too. And you know, we're all just doing the best that we can. Thank you guys so much for your support on the mindset and makeup series. I've been having so much fun with it. I hope that you're finding them helpful. And if you did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you'll also consider subscribing before you go and we will see you in our next video. Bye guys.